out there Spread a little aloha around the world And breakfast with Bob Thank you, Poncho Man. Welcome back to Breakfast with Bob, our Not Quite Kona edition. My name is Bob Babbitt. We are brought to you by Master Spas, As Fuels Go Longer, Hoka Let's Fly, Deborah Wetsuits, Premium Plus Sports, and of course, our Challenged Athletes Foundation in our first 30 years. CF has now raised over $159 million, sent out over 44,000 grants to challenge athletes in all 50 states, 73 countries, 105 different sports. One of those sports is baseball. And today we get to chat with two baseball players. We have Tyler Meralt, who is a beat baseball player. And of course, we have Parker Bird, who just became the first Division I baseball player to play using a prosthetic leg at East Carolina University. Uh, Tyler, let's start with you, my friend. So Tyler, growing up, what were your sports? Um, yeah, so uh, I played baseball probably up until eighth grade. And then uh, once I got to high school, I did football in the fall, basketball in winter, and then track in the spring. And uh, my biggest sport out of the three is probably track. I'm a pretty fast kid, so I love like the 200s, long jump, stuff like that. And uh, that's helped translate to, you know, being pretty good at the start of baseball, at least as I'm starting that up. So, yeah. So 200, give me an idea. What type of times we run it for 200? Um, around 23. So 23. Well, 23, yeah, the high 23 <laughs> towards the beginning. And then once we got towards senior year, I'd be doing around 23. But there's a lot, a lot of great athletes that run that. So it's definitely competitive for sure. <laughs> so when so we're talking 2022, you're, you're just going through your life as normal. And what happened? Yeah. So um, I was just I just got home from my senior year of college. I had uh, probably three or four classes left to do at home after that. And I was home for about a month. And then all of a sudden, I just had a blind black spot in the middle of this eye. And, uh, you know, with no idea what was going on. I don't have any knowledge of any family members that have had blindness before. So it took about three months for them to figure it out. And during that time, I just my vision progressively got worse until uh, around that three month point, I had no no real usable vision left. And then by that point, they uh, diagnosed me as a genetic disease called uh, Lieber's hereditary optic neuropathy or LHON. And uh, yeah, it all happened pretty quick for sure. So when something, when you have a life altering experience like that, and Parker certainly can relate to that, when you have that at the age of, of 22, what did you, did you had any exposure to adaptive sports at that point? Did you have a friend who was in a wheelchair or blind or any knowledge whatsoever? Um, no, not at all. Honestly, I, you know, I probably didn't even have any knowledge that it was possible. So it was for the first probably year or so that I was blind. I really didn't think there was much I could do for like activity wise besides like lift weights a little bit. And uh, at, at the blind school we went to, we did like fencing. So, uh, but I found the beatball team around uh, last May and uh, it's just been awesome ever since then for sure. So talk a little bit about beat baseball. I've I've uh, I've was at the MLB network and we had Harold Reynolds and some of the guys wearing the eye shades and it is a very interesting sport. The ball has a beep in it and your mm -hmm. own guy is pitching and your own guy is catching and they're sort of saying ball so you know what sort of when the swing. But as mm -hmm. a guy who played baseball before, how hard was it to adapt to trying to react to a beep? when you yeah, don't know this yeah. ball could be coming right at your face. Yeah, no, definitely. So it's, it's, a, it's a lot of trust between uh, the catcher, you and the pitcher. And it's a lot different from baseball where they're on your team. And obviously there's defense on the outfield that are the other team, but uh, the pitcher and the catcher are on your side, basically. So you just kind of got to trust the cadence and um, it starts like I say coach and then the catcher says set and then the pitcher will say ready pitch. And uh, during somewhere in that pitch is when I start the load of the swing and stuff. So, uh, you know, just the consistency is really the key with that. And uh, luckily, I have a little bit of speed, so I don't have to hit it too hard. I just have to make it the uh, 100 feet to the beeping bases, which uh, they all I don't know which side it'll be before that, before I swing. So, um, yeah, I just have to run to whichever one I ends up going off. And that's how it goes. So, Parker, I don't know if you've seen beat baseball before, but basically it looks like a tackling dummy down the first baseline and the third baseline. And when Tyler hits the ball, they activate the first or third base. You don't know as a hitter. Yeah, you don't know which they activate. If you get to that base before somebody picks up the ball, then you're safe. 
if they yeah, get the ball mm-hmm. before you get there, you're out. <laughs> exactly. <Wow. Yeah. laughs> it's crazy. So, so Parker, your life changed in 2022 as well. Here you right. are. You're about to start your freshman year at <laughs> Carolina University. It's your dream. I think you signed your letter of intent when you're 14 years old. You're mm-hmm. about to start. That's going to be in September of 2022. In July of 2022, what happened? Uh, yeah, so I was out tubing with some of my buddies. Uh, we were here for summer school, and it was the last weekend of summer school, and uh, we just went out to one of the guys' river houses, which is about 40 minutes away from ECU, which is where I go to school. And uh, we, w- we went out that Friday, had a great time, and that Saturday morning I was supposed to take one of the guys back to Greenville because he was supposed to help an elderly couple move some furniture. Well, he got a text that morning saying, hey, thanks for volunteering, but we don't really need your help. So uh, me and the boys just went back out that day, and the uh, first ride went great. The second, the second ride, uh, me and the guy got back onto the tube, and the driver was like, I'm going to go a little bit more crazy this time. So we're like, all right, it sounds good. And so me and Dixon both ended up falling off, and uh, we were swimming back to the boat, and I was ahead of Dixon, and I was using the rope from the uh, tube to help guide myself in. As I got within 10 yards or so, the driver uh, put the boat in reverse, or it got put, over, put in reverse somehow. And basically ended up running me over, uh, and the propeller hit both my legs and my left hand as well. And then I eventually had to get my right leg amputated below the knee on August 4th. So at that point, you don't know anything about adaptive sport. Uh, mm-hmm. You know your life is is changed forever. And you say to your dad, what is, Dad, what does this mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, and your dad says, it means you're never going to play baseball again. Yeah. But, but then mom said something that, <laughs> that really resonated. What'd she say? Yeah, so uh, through the process, after my amputation, my my knee uh, was completely dead at one point, and I went back into the, my room after the surgery, and uh, I always asked how it went, and mom's like, well, you're going to have to get your knee amputated, and with me not knowing much about prosthetics, I was just like, okay, well, that's just, they're cutting off a little bit more, like, that's not the end of the world, because I didn't know the difference between a below the knee and above the knee at the time. Yeah, and um, so I was like, all right, it sounds good. And my dad's like, "Do you know what this means?" I'm like, "No, sir." He's like, "Well, this means you'll never be able to play baseball again." And I just lost it right then. And then my mom looked at my dad with that stern look she gave him, and uh, she was like, "Do not let him tell you that. Uh, you can do anything you want in life. Uh, there always has to be a first to everything. And uh, why can't it be you?" So I mean, ever since that moment, it kind of just. Uh, flip my mindset and I really just why couldn't it be me was more of my mindset now so back over to Tyler Tyler so you it, you're going through learning how to navigate this world as a, a visually impaired person using a cane cooking etc when did you find that wait a second I can still be an athlete um, yeah, I mean, so like I, I mentioned before, we did a little bit of the like fence ticket stuff. So that was like the first stickler that like, you know, you could do something at least. And then uh, they had like a uh, walk to raise money for the school I was at. And there's a beatball booth there. And so a few of the players were there and they had some of those players had worse, even worse vision than me. So I was mm-hmm. like, OK, cool. And we got to like try out hitting with just the cadence and stuff. And I'm like, oh, this is great. And then, um, so I just wanted to try it out at first just to see what it was like. And some of the, like my head coach is a very, very competitive guy. And you find that there's already like 20 other teams in the country that we can play against. And then the first practice I remember, like we just, we did like sprints again. It was probably the first time I sprinted in like two years. And even though it's like, I'm, you know, running without seeing, it was, it was fun for sure. And I was like, throwing up the first practice and stuff and it made me feel like I was a high school kid again, for sure. It was awesome. Well, and I know for, from a CF perspective, we give out a ton of grants for beatball world series, people traveling mm-hmm. to beatball world series. It's a, it's a big sport. It's pretty competitive, right? Oh yeah, definitely. Like I wasn't really expecting that. So like the first tournament, there's like, you know, the other teams like jeering you and stuff and like, you know, they're going crazy every time that they get a hit and, making fun of you every time you strike out and stuff. But, uh, you know, your team obviously supports you really well too. And, uh, it was just, a, it was really cool just to see how competitive it really was. And, and cause on the field, everybody's pretty much the same. So it's, it was great. It was great. How many people are, is it four people on a team? How does that work? Um, yeah. So there's a different number of people on each, on different teams, depending on like the location kind of, but, uh, our team has almost 20, 20 or so people depending on the year. But, uh, 
on the field, you can have like six people on defense and then um, some of those players can just play defense and some of them can just hit too. So, you know, up to like nine or so is usually like the main starting lineup stuff. So like that, but uh, you can get away with having like five or six people total on some of the teams. And if those kids are, have a lot of experience and are really good at what they do. So they, they're still pretty competitive, even with the small amount of people. So in the field, do you have sighted people with the team in the field to direct them? Otherwise, people just have to dive in front of the beep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, it's a lot, it's similar to how the offense works. So um, either side of the field has a spotter, they call it. And um, they, we do it by numbers on the field. So like oh, if I'm like away in the back outfield, they call it like a rover. And uh, they'll say like four or five or six or something like that. Those are like my numbers. So the four is like to my left, five is middle, six is right. And then the way they yell it, like they like scream it, it's like a hard hit line drive to you. <laughs> and if they like say like a kind of a high pitched thing, it's like a pop fly or something like that. So it's there's different ways that they can indicate how the ball's coming towards you. And then we have to like dive to that spot and like kind of like a sideways Superman sort of thing to block the ball and pick it up off the ground. So. Yeah. When when we were doing at MLB State at MLB Network, we had Harold Reynolds in the field. He's like, "Wait, wait, you're diving towards a beep, and you don't know if it's a grounder, if it's a liner. That is like the ballsiest thing." They they immediately Harold and Carlos immediately made donations to CAF. Going, this is crazy. You guys dive in front of a ball and have no idea. Can you imagine that, Parker? You're I can't. Diving. How how is the material of the ball? Is it like a baseball or is it different? Yeah, so um, it's probably a little bit bigger than like a softball, so it's about like this yeah. big. But they they come at you pretty fast. Sometimes. Yeah, I can only imagine. That's all. Awesome. I've had a few like chin shots and a few mm. like just uh, <laughs> bruises around the ribs and stuff like that. Yeah. But yeah. it's not too bad as long as you can keep yourself in decent shape. So. <laughs> it's a uh, each ball is like sixty dollars or something. The balls are expensive because there's a beep inside, and yeah, I think I really like one ball will last half a game. So it's it's expensive to go yeah. through these. Yeah, it's it's a it's a nutty game. And we when we did it in MLB Network, we had Harold hitting, and he hit a couple times. And both times we activated, or they activated the right field line, so first base side, and he ran to that uh, to the tackling dummy, and it wasn't a problem. The third time he hit, they activated the one down the third base line, and he I mean, went. Full on, oh my God, hands out in front, trying to figure yeah. out where it was. It, it, Parker, you would, it's, it's yeah. a, that's it's not, a, that's not natural for a baseball player to run. No, to be wondering so. where the base is or it's, I, I, now, can, I, I can imagine. <laughs> Tyler, I heard that if you catch the ball on the fly, that you automatically go into Hall of Fame or something like that. <laughs> it actually has happened a couple of times. It's uh, more, like two or three times I've seen it in just our practices, but I've seen it twice or so in live games too. But if you catch the fly ball in the outfield, it counts as two outs. So that's how that, that's how that works for for that. Wow. It doesn't happen much, but I mean, if you can like, if it's a slow pop fly, you can kind of center where the ball is, especially if you have good spotters and they're kind of helping you find it. But yeah, it, it does happen once in a while. <laughs> So, so Tyler, when this happens and you can feel, um, poor me, my life is over. I can't believe why is this, why is this happening to me? What, what were the lowest moments for you and how did you get past that? Um, yeah, I think, um, I was very used to just, you know, being really busy. Like I just got home from college where I was, you know, doing stuff every day with different people and like doing DoorDash and Uber just to make extra money and stuff, you know, typical college kid type thing. And uh, I just started a job at like TD Bank over the summer. So I was like going blind doing the training for that. So that was difficult for sure. But the lowest points for me probably were just the times where I would be just at home and I felt like I had nothing to do. It was like before I could, before I really learned to use my phone or anything. So I would just kind of like sit down, lay down and listen to music all day and stuff. But uh, as I slowly started to learn more about how like assistive tech works and how I can just use my iPhone pretty much the same way I used to and how like computers work great. And, you know, I just started going back to the gym a little bit. And so slowly it definitely uh, changed my mindset for sure. And it definitely helps to just get out there as much as possible, but being stuck inside is not a good feeling at all. <laughs> well, and especially it's not like you can go out, Oh, I'll just go out and drive here or drive there. 
you're yeah. sort of dependent on, on other people now, right? Yeah, yeah, for the most part. I mean, luckily nowadays we can Uber a lot. So I do, I use that probably like 10 times a week just going, if I want to go somewhere, I'll just hop in the Uber. But, you know, before I, like I was I scared is probably strong, but I was just not comfortable like just trying to get into some random car when I can't see anything. So now, now it feels like normal, but you know, at, at the time it was like, oh, I can't, I, there's nothing I can do it unless my mom drives me somewhere, which is exactly. like, uh, as a person that, you know, had been independent for four years in college, it's quite the transition for sure. So Parker, it's one thing. So now you have the leg amputated and mom has said, Hey, there's someone has to be the first. But mm -hmm. at that point, you don't know what if you can play baseball again. You don't know what sports are out there. Uh, that's, I think, sort of when we connected. And mm -hmm. next thing you know, you're with one of the best prosthetists in the world with David Rotter out of Chicago. And now it's less about, uh, you know, poor me, I'm missing my leg to, OK, I want to hit again. I want to play again. Yeah. That switch in mindset, how important was that for you? I think it was key um, just because, I mean, in the hospital, I didn't know what the next step was and how I would be able to do it. And then once I got to the hospital, I didn't really have a leg that was very comfortable. And uh, I didn't have a leg really at all until that December. And then it wasn't a great, great fit at first. And then uh, I got the grant from you guys at CAF and uh, I got with David and he got me fitted with a prosthetic that was more able uh, for baseball and it was better used for uh, mobility and stuff and then it also fit very well so uh, that was the first time I was able to uh, walk without assistance or um, really walk with any crutch or any sort of that so after that it was just kind of like hey let's do this um, let's adapt to it um, uh, we have to do something so then that's when I just made minor changes in my swings and uh, after that it just kind of took off from there. So as you're as you're getting fit with the leg and are you talking to your coach at this point saying, hey, you know what? I, I still want to play ball. I'm a scholarship yeah. athlete at East Carolina University and I don't really want to give that up. Yeah. So luckily with Coach Godwin and the coaching staff here, they knew my dream uh, ever since I got into the accident. They knew that I wanted to play baseball again and my goal is to get back onto the field. So they were very supportive the whole way through. and. Last year, whenever I wasn't technically on the roster, uh, they were very good with letting me go to PT whenever I needed to or let me go do the extra workout instead of going to watch a practice that I wasn't able to participate in. And then once this year rolled around, they were like, all right, it's, it's full go. And I told them everything I was capable of. And uh, they kind of worked with me at the beginning of the season. And now I'm just full back, like doing everything like everybody else is doing. Well, and the other side of this, uh, uh, Parker, is you're – Obviously, no one wants this to happen, right? To either of you guys, right? right? Nobody wants to say I'm 22 years old and I've I've lost my vision. Nobody wants to say I'm, you know, I'm a, a sophomore in, in college and I lost my leg. But at the same time, uh, Parker, I've seen the photos you've been posting from these different games in Richmond, Virginia, and San Antonio, Texas, with other amputee kids mm -hmm. who have, you know, and and uh, when we when we had sort of Tyler. Um, we did a little Super Bowl ad with Parker, basically <laughs> saying exactly what we said earlier that, hey, someone has to be the first. And Parker's goal is to become first division one baseball player with a prosthetic leg. Well, five days after Super Bowl, on I think it was the 16th of February, here's Parker getting called up in the eighth inning to pinch hit and actually become the first baseball player, division one baseball player with a prosthetic leg to play in a division one baseball game. Parker, that moment, how, how special was that for you? I mean, it was cool. Um, just to get back into the game and get that competitive spirit back was awesome. But to see the reaction of other people, the reaction of the amputee world and just really the nation uh, in general was awesome. Just to see the support and see the love that I received afterwards and uh, to see the people that I've inspired after the fact, like Cooper and uh, Miles, the little kid I met this weekend, uh, I mean, this is great seeing people like that at the games now uh, and just giving people like that hope in the uh, future. Yeah, that's uh, the coolest thing, Tyler, is after that 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 aired, at, at, when Parker went to the plate, it ended up on ESPN Sports Center, it ended up on Yahoo News, it ended up on World News Tonight. It went everywhere. 
So now mm-hmm. every game that Parker goes to, families are reaching out going, my little boy is two years old and he's missing his leg below the knee. Or mm-hmm. my little boy, actually Cooper, lost his foot on July 23rd, 2022. Uh, he's in Texas and wakeboarding when a yeah. rope ran across the top of his foot and took top of his foot off. Same exact day as Parker. And this kid just oh. came down to San Antonio, Texas to watch Parker play. And uh, have you found that yourself, uh, Tyler, that you're you're getting people reaching out to you because they're hearing about your story? Um, yeah. I mean, even just like close, like people I've, you know, already met in my life, they're just like so impressed with everything that goes on with our team and like, like that. And just seeing a lot of the kids that I, I just, you see around that, uh, come to the games and stuff, they get so excited about all of it, whether it's one of my teammates, they're like son or daughter that, you know, they cheer like it's, it's the greatest thing ever. So it's awesome seeing that. And, uh, you know, I've definitely found a ton of inspiration from just the kids around me. Cause you know, a lot of the kids have just always been completely blind their whole life. So it's, um, cool to have, give them somebody to look up to for sure. So Tyler, you have a game coming up in Fenway Park. Yeah. Yeah. When's, when's that happening and who are you playing? Yeah. So, um, we're doing a little scrimmage to get the year started on April 20th. And, uh, so the Red Sox were nice enough to let us practice or play in the outfield against the, uh, we're playing against the Boston strong, which is a, another beatball team locally. And, uh, the strong has a, a few additional disabilities on the team as well, but they're, uh, a great group of people as well. And uh, it's going to be a great way to start the year. So Parker, earlier when I was talking to Tyler, he said, basically, this is part two, right? You had first life and then part two. Uh, for for you, Tyler, how is part two going right now? Um, if you like, if you told me, I always joke about this, like if you told me all this was going to happen five years ago, I'd be like devastated. But I'm like so shocked every day about how well things are for me. And, uh, you know, it's like that my friends are still great to me and my family is, you know, as supportive as they possibly can be. So I, I found just, you know, find positivity everywhere you can. And uh, I'm starting to finish my last class this semester. So I'll have my degree in finance. And yeah, every, everything's on the up and up for sure. It's, it's going good. I, th- I think you're going to have to help uh, Parker with his investments moving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a, I'm a business major right now, so I'm going through all the accounting classes and everything. I'm I'm enjoying it. So uh, finance maybe in the future for me as well. But I hope not. I hope it's public speaking and Paralympics, but I can always rely on a degree. Yeah, so Parker, when you look at your part two, obviously nobody wants what happened to either of you guys to happen. But how do you feel like your part two is going? I mean, I wouldn't want it any other way now. Um, just I found my purpose in life, and that's just to inspire others. And uh, if you would have told me this five years or even two and a half years ago uh, from today, I would have thought you were absolutely crazy, and uh, I wouldn't be living life to the fullest like I am now. But, uh, I mean, everything's great, and uh, I'm living just like I did before, just with a prosthetic leg, and I've met so many great people along the way and uh, truly blessed to be where I am now. Tyler, best game you've ever had playing beat baseball? Yeah, so uh, I've only I've only played uh, in like one tournament so far last summer. So I was first starting, but uh, I was my team got real excited because I was the first, well, second player I think to go two for two in his first two at bats. Mm. So uh, that was probably my favorite game, and you know it was pretty cool to have everybody crowd around you at the plate, like you got a home run in little league or something. So <laughs> that was just great for sure. Okay. And Parker, I think you're going to be playing some major summer ball, right? Yeah, so uh, I'm playing with the Newburn South Pauls, so I'll be getting consistent at bats there, and uh, that'll be, I mean, the first consistent time I'm on the field uh, playing in competitive games and not practicing. So I'm looking forward to that, and it's going to be fun. Well, how many games do you guys play? Oh, the summer we play yeah. probably around 60, 50, 60, so – I miss an everyday thing for a month and a half, two months. And uh, so it's going to be a grind, but it's going to be fun. Well, yeah, I mean, the the hard part, the positive and negative, positive being on a Division One baseball team, you guys get a ton of exposure. It's mm-hmm. it's world-class competition. The negative is that you'd be playing every day if you were Division Two or Division Three. <laughs> so, you know, you've had a yeah. – You've had to spend a lot of time on a bench uh, trying to st- stay pumped up, which I know you're great at. That's but right. th- this summer, playing every day is going to be awesome. 
yeah, it's going to be fun. Uh, I'm looking forward to it, and uh, I'm glad to have the opportunity. So, Tyler, had you applied for a CAF grant before this year? Um, no, this was my first time doing it, and uh, a lot of the other kids in my team do the same thing, applying for it. So they uh, recommended that I apply for it, and, uh, yeah, it was my first time applying this November. Well, I'm excited to tell you that you will be receiving your grant from CAF. Your travel grant, so that'll uh, your expense grant for whatever the heck you want to use it for. We're we're excited to have you part of the CAF family. I love the fact that you and Parker are both baseball players and baseball players in different ways. But baseball is baseball, man. It's 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 it's, right. it's the same. Welcome right. to the family, Tyler. Thank you. Thank you very much. I can't wait to see you play in Fenway Park. How cool, Parker? How cool is that playing Fenway? That made me jealous. That's how every kid's dream. I mean. Uh, everybody wants to play at the major league level, and you get to play on one of those fields. That's awesome. So, Parker, what's the rest of the season for you? Uh, we have a game tomorrow, and then we have a weekend series, and then uh, we just started conference play this past weekend. And uh, so it's a new, new season, and uh, so just fishing out uh, that out all the way through June and hopefully make as far as we can. I love it. I like bringing athletes together from the same sports who may play it a little differently. Cause at the end of the day, there's a sport, just it, people underestimate the power of sport to change lives. Tyler, how important has sport been in this journey? Oh, huge. I'd, I'd say that's probably like the most I've ever felt normal since being blind is just competing with all the guys. So it's, it's definitely a big primary part of my good attitude throughout this process. for sure. And for you, Parker, I mean, sports always been my life, and just the fact that I'm still able to do that with just one leg now is incredible. And I think that's the main thing in my rehab is the mental side of it was just something to look forward to and something to keep grinding for. And uh, I think it was key to my recovery. Love that. Hey, so talk a little bit about Little Miles. So Tyler, this weekend, <laughs> how old was that? Was he two? Yeah, he was about to turn two years old. Um, yeah, that was awesome. So. I mean, I'm really good with social media and trying to keep in touch with everybody that contacts me. But somehow I miss Miles' mom's text through DM on Instagram. And um, so I went back after I met him and I saw where she sent this long paragraph and uh, sent me a picture of Miles and told me that she was going to be at the game. But my dad had gotten in touch with her instead of me. And so he told me that they were going to be there. So I was looking forward to uh, meeting them. And then uh, I saw him or I actually saw Cooper first. And um, so I met Cooper, met his mom. Uh, they were there actually for the whole entire night. And they actually stayed in the same hotel we did. Um, so that was cool. But Miles was awesome, man. He's just a little, little kid. And just seeing, uh, I guess, one and however old he is, about to be two, um, your old user prosthetic and uh, just walk normal was awesome. And his family was awesome. great. And uh, I got to sign a little ball for him. And typically I have other amputees I see sign a baseball for me, but I know that he probably wouldn't know how to sign his signature, <laughs> but, uh, but it was cool. It was cool to meet. And guy. you met a little kid who got bitten by a shark. Yeah. Oh. Uh, his name is Jameson and uh, his family, I think, his family's from Florida, but they moved up to Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, I think he said about five years ago or so, just for ministry. His dad's a pastor. and uh, But Florida's still home for them, so they go down. And he was in the Florida Keys, and he was snorkeling with his little brother and his dad, and a 10-foot bull shark came and attacked him. But his accident happened, I think, August 14th of 2022, which – is kind of right near my accident yeah. as well. So um, it was cool to meet those guys, and they came to the game two weekends ago, and I met his family and uh, met James Jr., and it, it was cool. I love it. No question. Hey, guys, thanks so much for taking time. It's, it's, always, it's always a treat to get to connect two people who certainly relate to each other because you're both baseball players. You yeah. know what it takes. If somebody's good at what they're doing as a baseball player, each one of you can relate to that, right? You know how hard it is. If people see you during a game. They don't see you in the weight room. They don't see you in the cages. Uh -huh. They don't see you when things aren't, you know, when the cameras aren't on, people don't see you. But right. you guys can relate. The fact that Tyler is great at what he does and what Parker Parker's great at what he does, you guys can understand how tough it is to get there. Heck yeah. Well, Tyler, exactly. it's great meeting you, man. Uh, best of wishes. I'll be keeping in touch for sure. And I think it's great what you're doing and just keep keep going. 
You All as right. well, Ben. It's so impressive yes, for all your stuff. So great to hear. Yeah. Great to hear from you. Yes, sir. Thank you, guys. Tyler Moralt and Parker Bird have been our guest again. This is Breakfast with Bob, our not quite Kona edition. Thanks everybody for tuning in. We'll catch you next time. See ya. <laughs>